I recently realized that we haven't really been putting our five minute sonar videos on our YouTube page. My bad. We're going to start putting them on there about every week just to start building that library up, that section of our YouTube channel at Core Ultrasound. Now, some of these videos are going to be a little bit on the old side, but if they haven't been updated, it either means that number one, the data is still good in them, or number two, I just haven't had time to get around to it. So we're slowly going through these and we're updating these, but we really want to share with you all, all those five minute Sona videos that we have. Now, briefly, if you don't know what they are, what our five minute Sona videos are, are really quick, just short lectures around five minutes, most of them are five minutes or less, where we kind of just show you the basics of how to do a specific examination. We're not going to talk about every scenario. We're not going to talk about all of the evidence, when to use it. We're going to assume that you already want to use this and you just want a refresher or a quick primer on specifically how to do that examination. So check out the video and let me know what you think. In this video, we are going to discuss how to diagnose pericardial tamponade by using your bedside ultrasound. The first step is to diagnose an effusion, and we already covered this in a different five minute sono lecture. So, if you need help with that, I would review the pericardial effusion five minute sono video. All of these findings can be used to help you diagnose your patient with sonographic tamponade. Let's focus in on these two. These are the main ones, right atrial diastolic collapse and right ventricular diastolic collapse. Let's start off with the earliest, most sensitive finding, the right atrial diastolic collapse. The key here is to look and see what the valves are doing. When you're looking at the atria, when the valve is open, that is systole. When the valve is closed, that is diastole of that chamber. Now I see some collapse here of that right atrium, but when I slow it down, I can see that this collapse is happening when the valve is open, meaning there is a systolic collapse, not diastolic collapse of that right atrium. And by the way, you can do this on your machine by having the patient go through a few cardiac cycles when you can see it on the ultrasound, hit the freeze button, and and then with the mouse pad kind of cycle back to see when the chamber collapses compared to when the valve is open. Now let's look at this. This is another apical four chamber view like the previous one. The right side of the heart is over here. We have an effusion and I can see that there is some collapse of this chamber right here. I'm going to slow it down and see that this chamber collapse happens when the tricuspid valve is closed. So this is right atrial diastolic collapse. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Now there is an older study that looks at this and actually compares the time of the overall cardiac cycle that the right atrium is collapsed as a marker of tamponade. That is something you definitely can do, but it is a little too complex for me. So for me, I'm just looking at collapse of that right atrium. Now moving on to the right ventricle, this is a sub xiphoid view. There's people that talk about a trampoline sign as being diagnostic. This looks like a trampoline sign to me, like someone's jumping up and down it. But let's freeze it and let's see when that collapse is happening relative to the cardiac cycle. This is the tricuspid valve. We can see that when this collapse happens, the valve is actually closed and it pops up when the valve is open. That means this is systolic collapse, not diastolic collapse. So although there is an effusion and there is some bounciness of that right ventricle, this is not sonographic tamponade. This in contrast is a sub xiphoid view. You have an effusion over here. Here's the left side of the heart, right side of the heart over here. And we can see that the right free wall over here is collapsing when the mitral valve is open. I know we can't get a good view of the tricuspid valve, but the mitral and the tricuspid valves, they open up at about the same time. We can see this opens, this collapse. Watch for it, boom, right there. So because we have collapse when the valve is open, that is diastolic collapse, which is sonographic tamponade. The parasternal long axis view when looking at tamponade is something that can be very useful because you can tell exactly when in the cardiac cycle that collapse of the right side of the heart is happening. So you can definitely slow it down here and see that this collapse of the right ventricular outflow tract is happening when the valve is open, but you can also put an M mode cursor through there, just like you do for the EPSS. And you see right here, this is going to be diastole, this is systole, this is diastole, this is systole. And you can see here that when the valve is open, when it's trying to fill, that's when this collapse of that RV free wall is happening. 
The next thing we're going to talk about is the respirophasic inflow variation, aka Bulsa's paradoxus. There's a few numbers to remember as far as the abnormal variation in max velocities through the mitral and the tricuspid valves. This is usually done with the apical four chamber view, and you use your pulse wave Doppler through the mitral and tricuspid valves, and you look for basically the peaks and the troughs of each one and figure out what the variation is. If it's greater than 40% through the tricuspid valve or greater than 25% through the mitral valve. That is considered a diagnostic for tamponade, although I will say sometimes I struggle with knowing if that's due to tamponade or due to just movement of the heart with the patient's respirations. So this is one that I'd use less frequently. Another extra thing that I tack on that really isn't a heart exam at at all is the IVC. If I look at the IVC in a patient in whom I'm borderline about tamponade and I see this, a very flat IVC collapsing 100%, I'm less likely to think they have tamponade. Whereas if I have the exact same echo and I see this very distended IVC, that means they have a high CVP and more likely to have tamponade. So it's just an extra data point to help me out when I'm trying to figure out if this is tamponade or not. As a recap, remember you're looking for diastolic chamber collapse. Now that is diastolic chamber collapse for each specific chamber. So that's atrial diastolic collapse and ventricular diastolic collapse. We focus in on the right side of the heart. Although if you see diastolic chamber collapse on the left side, also bad. You can slow down the clips or you can use M mode to help you figure out if it's during a systole or diastole. And remember to look at the IVC if you need a tiebreaker. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. I can't wait to hear from you soon and happy scanning.